did a gecko and I started shading outside of it. So I did the line work. Yeah. And then I jumped onto the shader and I had lime green and like let's say like this is the gecko. Yeah. I like wasn't looking and I just went like this. And just the way I was like stretching, I thought like this was inside the gecko. So I just started like whip shading like lime green. And then I pulled my hand away and there was like just giant green whip shade marks. And the guy didn't see it though. So I was like, yo man, you know it would look real cool. I was like, if this thing was sitting on some leaves. And he was like, yeah. I was like, I was like I'm not going to charge you man. He's like, yeah, I'd love, I'd love some leaves. So I just put a big leaf there. <laughs> <laughs> Dan has a very distinct style that you you know usually when you see it you can you can tell it it's his own, you know. Dan's approach is just different. And it's it's unique. We're all special. Dan's just a little extra special, you know. He's into obviously tattooing, music. The new Inquisition record. This is the shit right here. He's into painting, uh, and that's with brushes or aerosol. He's also into collecting and antiquing. Oh, he's extremely well-rounded. It's confusing. It's a cultural identity issue. I'm almost like overly exposed to things. I have so many friends that are into so much interesting stuff and I've managed to find merit in almost everything. Luckily, I've really kind of cultivated what I like the most about the things that I like and I've kind of made it work. The shop I work at now is Smith Street Tattoo Parlor. Hey, Craig, will you set my guy back, please? There's four of us working at Smith Street Tattoo. It's me, Burt Crack, Eli Quinters, and Dan Santoro. Me, Eli, and Bert opened the place sort of together, and then Dan joined us about a year later. But Dan was always in the plan. Dan was like our fourth guy. I was at Adorned, and at the time that Smith Street was even a twinkle in any of their eyes, I was around a lot. I was spending a lot of time at Steve's. A lot of nights, get off of work, hop on the train, go over to Steve's, have a couple of cold boys, some painting. So uh, around that time, Steve had mentioned something that he, had, he was walking his dog in the neighborhood, and he saw the storefront that looked like it had been vacant for some time and how he thought it was a really cool block right by the train and you know, all this stuff like that. And he said, you know, he's gonna look into it. I, didn't, I was scared to say yes at first. I didn't know Smith Street was gonna be as amazing as it is. I, I mean, I should have known, but I didn't. And I thought about it for like a week and then I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. I'm pretty impulsive and whatever, so I'm just gonna do it. Just one of those things where the planets aligned for Smith Street. We were all friends dream situation for me, working with these guys. This is 100% our clubhouse. <laughs> I never feel like uh, driving here from Queens like I'm going to work. I always feel like I'm coming here to hang out with my friends and have a good time, you know? I think Eli's closer to Steve and me and Bert, I think might be a little similar. We exchanged birthday tattoos. We had the same birthday. Definitely. So we actually did a uh, little cancer crabs on each other on one of our birthdays. <laughs> Bert absolutely loves the fact that we're born on the same day. He brings it up about once a week. I, I, I was born July 12th, 77. I believe he's July 12th, 83. I, I'm, I'm very much a cancer, so is, so is he, you know, hard on the outside, soft on the inside. We're, we're both really sensitive, you know, like, it, it wouldn't, didn't take much to really ruffle our feathers, you know what I mean? No, there's already graffiti, dude. Of course, right but yo, here. but there's not already tags all over the fucking walls in here. Right in wall. All right, we're not having a fucking moral conversation right now. <laughs> it's the dumbest shit ever. Before Dan came on, I was kind of the loose cannon. Because I'm a little bit messy. I, I definitely can be a loud mouth. And may, maybe in a different way, Dan's now the loose cannon. He's just a pathological thinker, you know? I don't know, it's like, you know when you go to Walmart and you see like the old lady with the 
like the puffy pink cat sweatshirt. You know the feeling you get? That's how I feel sometimes when people bring like certain tattoos in. Like, I really want to give it to them and I want to make it really good. All right, so I get a phone call and this woman's like, and we have this woman, but she wants to get tattooed. I think she got, I think it was Charlie Brown, if I'm not mistaken. And she's going like, ah! like dude, and she's like shaking her leg. Within three lines, the tattoo was so fucked. So I was just like, like ah! dude, it was like being on like a ride. I was just like, and I did it, you know? Nothing's ever uh, set in stone with Santoro. Dan seems to, to be definitely the least, the least organized out of everybody. Dan also, you know, has the same mentality as far as that's our job in making tattoos, but Dan just does everything by the seat of his pants. And I think that the whole seat of the pants or unpreparedness or whatever, I think he subconsciously does, is that way on purpose. The way he tattoos, there's a lot of confidence and even very simple, clunky tattoos just look so good. He's one of my favorites for sure. It's a traditional, real stripped down, real bare bones. I would say he's a little looser than maybe I am. I really try to do a, a very exact line and everything. And he recently moved me away from that. He's made me loosen up a lot. You know, I think he's kind of got a lot of what Dan Higgs had in that he knows just how to put down a line and, and just do the tattoo and, and it comes out, it, I don't know, it looks great. They can make something look pretty and, and delicate and all those things, but they still have that Santoro look to them, you know? Me and Dad, we, we do a lot of like really kind of bold tattooing, but it doesn't mean that Eli and Steve can't do the same thing. Well, we're a, we're a team, you know? Almost every tattoo that gets done, good or bad, we show off to each other. I think that's a really good thing. I've worked in shops where I couldn't even tell you the last tattoo I saw of an artist for months. You know what I mean? Like, you just kind of work in your little corner of the shop, finish the tattoo, put a bandage on it, see you later. There's no fun in that. I mean, I want to see it. You know, I want to see what you're doing. I want to see if you did something that maybe I should have been thinking about. We bite the hell out of each other, but it's cool. We work together. That's what it's for. That's why we, that's why we're there. These guys are just doing, yeah, the best of the tattoos around, in, in my opinion. It's the best shop in the world, <laughs> yeah, by far. For the, for the style, especially. Um, we've been planning this trip for a while from Melbourne, Australia. I don't know, we just saved up for six, seven months or so and then booked tickets and came. We haven't done too much tourist stuff yet, we've just kind of been sitting in the shop. I think we're up to 11 now and then uh, got a couple more uh, on Tuesday. So this one's from Steve um, and from Dan. This one's from Dan as well, cool little cat. Got the dagger skull from Dan. Um, little crying emo heart from Dan as well. And that one's from Steve. It's just it's like a kind of special thing at Smith Street because we all do anything, but we all basically do the same thing too. I mean, people don't necessarily ask or say that looks like a Steve Boltz tattoo or a Burt Crack tattoo so much anymore as they might say that looks like a Smith Street tattoo. And I, and, and I hear that and I love it. If you come to the shop and I'm not there, you're not afraid to sit in Dan's chair or Eli's chair because you know that you're gonna get basically the same product. Yeah, Steve did that. We very consciously want our tattoos to look a certain way, and, and New York is part of that. I think New York's a very straightforward approach to, to living. There's no fucking around. And I think that in tattooing, maybe there's a similar thing, whereas it's a very straightforward look to tattoos as opposed to it being fancier or you know more artistic. Hey, we want our tattoos to look classic. We don't want them to look dated. You know, and I, you know, when somebody comes in and wants like an owl on their chest, it's like, why don't you just get a fucking eagle on your chest? Why do you gotta get an owl? The technical application is what will make a tattoo slick to me. You know, it's a good thing to just be able to give somebody a nice, solid, clean, predictable tattoo. That's a good thing. And even if it's a tattoo that 50 people have, it's new and it's, it's original because, you know, because you have to put your hand to it, you know? 
you know, we're all really going for the, the tattoo style. We want our tattoos to look like tattoos. You know, like when you're a little kid and you think about what a tattoo is, the first thing for myself and I think a lot of other people that popped into their head are, you know, like the anchors, like Popeye head or even a mom heart or something like that. Like just something that would almost be represented in a, a cartoon, so to speak. You know, like what you picture in your head when somebody says the word tattoo is usually some sort of tattoo imagery, not, you know, some no outline color portrait thing, you know what I mean? So, so I mean, I think that's probably unifying in that terms, you know, we use a bold outline, a lot of black shading, you know, we, we have a lot of the same reference material. Tattooing is an art and its form is, you know, this traditional, almost uh, sailor style tattooing, you know? I guess maybe I started tattooing late enough. There was still like, enough going on with people wanting to do traditional stuff that I was like, okay, I know I want my tattoos to look like that, but how? And then I then I was like finding the Dan Higgs tattoos that were in Tattoo Times. Tattoo Time is a publication that Ed Hardy put out from early 80s probably to like the early 90s that had uh, the weirdo art section. And they're just really strange tattoos, but they still had that traditional application that I was looking for in anything, really. I mean, I just, you know, I'd see tattoos and not really know why I liked them, but I knew I just liked them. And then I'd realize down the road, like, oh, it's because they're bold and, you know, they're simple.